This game, this game never changes. Well, it is a sequel. You really didn't expect it to change a whole lot, did you? I'll admit that I like this game better, but I'm not sure that it's that it's just because it's a better game or that I'm actually just getting used to this style of gameplay. Uh, it has the same top-down view and the same slow, agonizingly slow uh, combat system. But uh, getting into the plot of the innocent, in order to save your dying village, you are sent to search the post-apocalyptic west coast of America and search for a Garden of Eden creation kit. What's that? Uh, before the nuclear apocalypse of uh, World War III, uh, there was a company called Vault Tech. They uh, invented uh, vaults to save people from the uh, nuclear war. Um, along with the vaults, they uh, also developed a technology um, that would purify the wasteland so uh, people could survive uh, the aftermath. So how does it work? I didn't actually get to that part. Oh, come on, seriously. I, I realize this is the second game in a row that I'm reviewing without finishing, but I'm really wanting to stick to this schedule. And I've played over 60 hours of this game over the last month. I don't care how long you played. I care that you can't manage to finish a freaking game before reviewing it. Well, I, I kind of hit a wall of power armor. Once I reached to retrieve the geck, I, uh, and I made it back to my village, it, I, there's this, uh, faction of people that were, uh, part of the, uh, old war, pre-war America called, uh, the Enclave, which, and the Enclave is pretty much the government of the United States, and, uh, they, uh, they just came back with, uh, got big guys in power armor. And it's really, it was really strange because up to then it was a, a kind of a man versus nature kind of situation. And when they showed up, it was a kind of like a man versus man type story. So it's like for the mass majority of the game, you're fighting just the nature, the, the random encounters of uh, mutants or, or ghouls or wild creatures. And then... Suddenly, you're, there's this faction here wanting to fight. There, that wants to fight you. It's like, where do these guys come from? Sounds like excuses to me. Uh, probably, but uh, one thing I did like over this game, I don't know if uh, Fallout One could, you could recruit multiple followers, but uh, in Fallout Two, uh, Fallout Three at New Vegas, you can only have one follower at a time. But uh, here in this game, I, I got. Uh, uh, Five, yeah, I, I was there was a six person party, so it was, it was me and five other people. Uh, and uh, it was a nice change from the lone wanderer kind of uh, gameplay to have uh, like a, a team of, of uh, characters going around. And I bet that helped out a bit. They did, but unfortunately, the, the combat system, the, the way the combat system is set up, the more characters on screen, the slower the combat, the, the fighting goes. Because, let's see, your, your crew of six people show up with, like, a big group of dogs, like five or six dogs. And then every single person on the screen has to have their turn. It's like, come on, just come on. And there was a, a skill called the Outdoorsman. And when you got a high enough skill, it would start... Uh, Asking if you wanted to encounter these wild encounters. Which you skipped. But, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> and you wonder why you didn't have a high enough level to deal with the Enclave. Well, I did skip a lot of the side quests, too. I was kind of kind of pushing it in a hurry. And although the, the extra characters did slow down the gameplay, they really added a lot of character, character to the game. The first character I recruited was uh, a shaman named Sulik, Sul S-U-L-I-K. I, <laughs> I do not know if that's supposed to be pronounced, but anyway, um, he's a, a tribal guy. He talks to the spirits and you can ask him what the spirits think about a certain location, although they never have anything to stay. But uh, he has a, it's kind of, he was kind of startling because he was one of those uh, talking heads, they call him, because uh, 
in the animations, every once in a while you run into a character with animations and uh, and uh, he'll pop up with a, he's a guy with a bone sticking through his nose and uh, I don't know if he was supposed to be Native American, but he seemed to be pretty white and he had a Jamaican accent. So I don't, I don't know who it, uh, what he was supposed to be. So I don't know if it was racist to have this character with a bone sticking through his nose. Uh, his, uh, his purpose of being was uh, he was uh, trying to look for his sister who, uh, who was uh, kidnapped by uh, slavers. Uh, didn't follow his quest line. I didn't, uh, I would kind of recruit him for an extra gun, even though he has a sledgehammer. But uh, Vic is another character that you can uh, hire. Um, when you first uh, leave uh, your village and search for the Gek, he uh, he's the person that you're sent out to search for because he uh, seems to have information about the the vaults and uh, and when you first when you finally find him after I finally found him because I was lost and I didn't want to find him walk through but when I finally found him he was in the service of uh, slavers slavery seems to be a bit of a problem in the game you can choose to join the slavers if you wish but I always play uh, these kind of games as the good guy so I went ahead and um, skipped out on uh, joining slavery. But Vic seems to be pretty handy with a pistol. He also um, has a higher repair skill than you do. So every once in a while when you click to repair uh, something, he'll uh, jump in and repair it for you. So he'll he'll uh, base off his stats instead of your staff, stats on repairing things. Sounds handy. Well, when he decides to do his job, he, he is controlled by AI after all. But at least he has a purpose. Um, Lenny, the the ghoul I picked up, he uh, he claims to be a medic, which is why I was kind of excited to to hire him. Um, doesn't do anything. What's a ghoul? A ghoul is a person who is exposed to a massive dose of radiation. Uh, most of the ghouls are around since the uh, since the war itself, uh, a couple hundred years before this the story starts, uh, they're, uh, they're immune to, uh, actually they're healed by other radiation, but, uh, they don't get diseases, they don't get sick, they don't age, but they are horrifically mutated into, like, a zombie state. They, uh, they don't decay themselves, but it looks like they are decayed. In fact, a uh, zombie is a racist term against, uh, ghouls. And, Actually, a good chunk of the ghouls you'll run into uh, in the later games, but uh, not so much the previous games, uh, there are just randomless, random zombies that just kind of roar or attack you. But uh, in Fallout 1 and 2, they seem to be like actual villages of people living in this condition. Lenny, he, uh, his story is that uh, he, uh, he ran into the... Uh, Vault Dweller, which is the character from the first game, and uh, he uh, didn't have the courage to join him on that quest. Well, does his story check out? Was he in the first game? I don't... I didn't run into him when I played, but there's a lot of things I didn't run into when I played Fallout 1. And although he claims to be a medic, he... all he seems to do is uh, make sarcastic combats... Uh, comments in combat and then run away. He didn't steal you. Not in any way I could tell. Another surprisingly useless character that I ran it, that I hired was uh, Marcus. Uh, he's the uh, sheriff of a town called Broken Hills. Um, Broken Hills is a very progressive town. They uh, have very equal standing between uh, hu regular humans, the ghouls, and uh, people known as the super mutants. What are super mutants? I have a feeling that's better explained in the parts of the first game that I didn't play. But, uh, the, the pre-war American government developed a, uh, super soldier program that, uh, part of it was a uh, forest evolutionary virus, which, uh, was a retrovirus that, uh, mutated people into, the best way to describe it is a less angry version of the Incredible Hulk. Uh, when when people were ex ex well, when people were exposed to this virus, they were supposed to turn into these giant green. Yeah. Hey now, 
muscular creatures immune to all diseases, uh, radiation, and uh, very re resistant to damage. And uh, fortunately turned them sterile too. <laughs> they really tend to ha also have really high opinions of themselves. Well, the ones that can talk anyway. Well, most of them are just grunting at you. But anyway, um, I was very excited when the, the dialogue option came up when I was, when that allowed me to recruit him because it's, it's this giant hulk of a creature holding a giant minigun and he wanted to join me on a quest to take out uh, the bad guys out of the wasteland. A giant minigun sounds like a contradiction in terms. Sounds like a blessing. However, you said he was surprisingly useless. Well, he seemed to have some kind of vendetta against Sulek because every time we got in combat, uh, he would just kind of blow him away. And half the crew as well. And a lot of times in, in combat, it, it, there's a little window on the bottom of the screen that shows uh, like the different combat dialogues uh, and like you cause like 50 damage to the character or something. But every time it'd get around to uh, Marcus's turn, it would say, oops, uh, Solik was hit instead of intended target, or this guy was hit to, it's like, he'd just go <laughs> and spray everybody in, in front of him. Well, many guns do tend to blow away everything in front of the person using it. And there has been a lot of times where he's facing one direction, it'll be his turn and, whoops, uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I cannot tell you how many times I ended up uh, Marcus really taught me to save often because there is no auto save in this game either so you'll be playing oh you're a pair of legs now because <laughs> because Marcus just blew your ass away and then then you're back four hours earlier because you didn't forgot to save why the hell would he do that well, the uh, combat system and most of the gameplay options in Fallout 1 and 2 are uh, based on stats and uh, rolls. Um, kind of like an old tabletop game like D&D &D or, or uh, some kind of role-playing game like that. Or uh, sometimes you just roll a crit bad, bad roll and, or a critical failure and uh, I don't know how many times I've dropped my weapon or shot myself in the foot and just had bad luck. But the last person I, I recruited, um, I was very happy to recruit him. Uh, although he never has, he, I didn't, he never had a weapon. Um, he was a very effective uh, fighter. He was a very heavy hitter on the team. In fact, when, when I finally did run into the Enclave, uh, both... Uh, Goris and Marcus were the only pre people to ever take out Enclave soldiers. What was he? I really don't want to ex spoil what Goris is, because when I first got to Vault 13 and opened the door, I about dropped my pants. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was not expecting that. Um, I, I want to say what it is, but I don't want to spoil it for the people who don't know. But holy crap, that was a surprise. Um, uh, yeah, um, every time I ran into the Goris' people in the wasteland, it was pretty much a game over. Because even when I tried to make it to the uh, edge of the map to try to get away from them, they would always swarm me and just wipe me out instantly. But, uh, yeah, so when, when it came up to... Uh, Goris said, hey, you want to join me? I was like, yes, please. And uh, yeah, he did not disappoint. But let me go ahead and get into the uh, things I, I liked and disliked about this game. Uh, starting with the dislikes, the, it's basically the same game over again. It has the same boring combat system. It has the same top-down view. And, and it has the same poor facial animations and it doesn't even seem to be on important characters it's just a random person will show up and it'll have a crappy animation like they're talking like this and their eyes are moving and their lips are moving but why are they talking like this it's like what the hell are you doing and 
it's so much better when it has the dialogue options and it's just a top-down view of the character. I don't understand why they have facial animations on some people. It's just, why? And it, it's not even on important characters either. It's just, every once in a while. Oh, it can't be that bad. And another major flaw again the, against the game is that there's no tutorial level. There's, it doesn't even tell you how the basic how to play the game. The the game starts out at a place called Temp, the Temple of Trials, and I was really excited because I thought they had included a, uh, a tutorial level, which the first game didn't have. So, but I find I got through the uh, the tr uh, trials, uh, the first trials. It's uh, fight giant ants, and I got to a locked door. It's like, okay, that's not too tough. I'll just go into my inventory, grab a lockpick. They don't offer, they don't include lockpicks. They don't show you how to lock the door, unlock the door. I, I finally had to go on YouTube, find a, a video on how to lock lockpick the door. And most half the freaking uh, walkthroughs on the freaking YouTube just show, hey, I... Uh, I guess there's a, a hotkey for it, lock picking, because they just click. I just click on the lock, the door to unlock it. It's like, what? How the hell did you do that? Eventually, I find finally finally found a video where it says you have to click on skills, click on lock, to click on the door. Sounds pretty straightforward. Well, yes, that makes a lot of sense, but there's nowhere in the game that tells you to do that. It's just assumes you know how to play and another major flaw in this this kind of game system is that all of the quests you have no idea what you're supposed to be doing the the person that gives you the quest is a lot of a lot of the quests is pretty much go either go find this guy and tell him something or go give this item to this person or something like that and the person will be like go find this person Who's this person? Well, go find it. And then you, in the dialogue, you end up, end up ending the dialogue, you come back to that person, you haven't found that person yet. It's like, and only that person and the person you're supposed to find has any idea what's going on between these two people. So good luck find, playing this game unless you want to walk through every single quest and every single interaction on the walk, freaking walkthrough. And if that's the way you want to play a game, go ahead and play a game like that. But uh, that's really not how I want to play a game. I I hate it when games just you have to find a walkthrough online to play to play the freaking game. It's just massive strikes against that game. Every time that I, that'll come up, I'll just, I'd rather not play a game than than have to find a walkthrough. But I decided to play this game, so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly expecting a like a glowing trail like in Fable, but some kind of like hint would be nice or some kind of clue that I'm on the right track or something. And another major flaw against the game is its reliance on the previous game. Almost every thing in the game is just a continuation of the previous game. Like every, like the the town your village village is, the town you start in the village is uh, founded by the pre the previous main character. It's uh, the vaults the the one of the towns you run into. The only reason it exists is because the the vault dweller and uh, the vault dweller did this, so this is happening. So it's like this game wouldn't have happened without the previous game. I know it's kind of duh as a sequel, but nothing in this game would have happened without the previous one. So it's I I refer to that as sequelitis when there's nothing in this game other than the continuation of the previous game. So was it better than the last one? Yes a little bit. It's it still <laughs> It does have better graphics. Uh, I gotta say that it it's not it's still a, a it's still a 1990s game. So don't expect that great 
it's not photorealistic by any manner, <laughs> but uh, it is better, and um, the camera zoomed in a little more, so you can see the characters and the char what the characters do doing a little better. And the uh, hit percentages are a little bit more forgiving. In the past, in the previous game, if you had uh, worse than 70%, you're not going to hit. But in this game, if you have a 60% chance of hitting, you're probably going to hit. And although I do uh, harp on the, uh, the gameplay a lot, when you get down to it, Fallout... The greatness isn't in the fall. That isn't in the combat system. It's not in the really storytelling of the game, uh, but it's in the atmosphere of the game. I I really love the atmosphere of this game, and although it sucks playing it, and living in this world would suck a lot, I really love the world this this game builds. The characters all fit in this world. You know, there's, there's just weird out there things like I came across a, a a bad luck dog and then the next screen over I ran into exploding cows <laughs> this, and wandering the wasteland I ran into a guy guarding a bridge which is the uh, which was a call like almost a word for word callback to the Monty Python and Holy Grail bridge scene it was it was freaking amazing and just and these people in the world are like they're living in this world and it's like they understand that this is the world they live in and it's a crappy world but it's the way they live so yeah it's a final score I'm going to give it a, another 2 out of 5 because it's Fallout 1.5 people, people degrade deride Fallout New Vegas by saying it's just Fallout three and a half. I'm giving I'm saying Fallout two is Fallout one and a half. Uh there's no improvement in the game. There's no it doesn't evolve enough, I should say. Uh it doesn't is it it just really doesn't do enough to distinguish it from the first game, so I don't feel good giving anything other than the score I gave it to the first game. So um, that's my my review for Fallout 2. And uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go play my one of my favorite games of all time.